an interesting year for you mm -hmm. personally. You were here, mm -hmm. um, then you got another opportunity, and, and now you're back. Can you sort of break down what the process has been like getting back here in Corral? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I was here last year working with the O-line, and, and I loved it. I enjoyed it, and, and I knew it was a good good test. I knew I wanted to coach, and, and you know, the way things worked out, I had an opportunity to play again, and, uh, you know, talking with Coach Riley and Cav, it was, it was an opportunity you don't really pass up. You know, it was kind of one of those things I – you know, was released and walked away from the game, but I still had a little bit in me. So I, uh, I decided to take that opportunity, and um, that happened in June. They brought Tavita in, so went to training camp and, and uh, you know, did well. Uh, unfortunately, they, they uh, I wasn't in the plans for them immediately. So uh, when I came back here, the first person I saw, actually, I saw Coach Riley at brunch the, the day after I got cut, and he told me if I wanted to come back, just to come back and. He'd, you know, created a quality control spot for me and, and got to do a lot of scout team work and a lot of, a lot of work with the O-line in the uh, classroom, which was fun. And then uh, I got brought back week nine through, uh, through 18, so, uh, or through 17. Um, and uh, I uh, went back at the start in the game, played in the last three. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. But then, you know, after that last season, I knew it was time to, to uh, retire. My body was breaking down and, and, you know, I wasn't recovering like I used to. And, and I just had a lot of a lot of injuries that were that were starting to build up and, and uh, I wasn't able to perform. So, you know, it took me a while. It took me about two months to kind of make that mental decision, kind of talked with my fiance and my family and, and decided that, you know, it was time to, time to hang them up and start coaching. And, and I came to Coach Riley first, you know, because I, I, they got a lot of guys like you've seen. And uh, he just, you know, he graciously offered me the tight end job. So it's been great for me. You know, a young coach, I want to learn everything about this game. and. and you know, when you're with the O-line, you're in such a secluded area that, uh, you know, working with the working with the tight ends, you do a lot of O-line stuff, but then you do a lot of receiver stuff. So uh, it's great. And Danny uh, Langsdorf has done a great job with me. Uh, you know, he's coached the position before at the NFL level. And so he works with me a lot. And Jay Losey's still there uh, kind of shadowing me to make sure everything goes smoothly. And and I got Aaron Nichols uh, help me on a daily basis. So it's been a it's been a great transition, and uh, you know just trying to learn the routes so I can teach those guys. Now, uh, you know you talked about all the guys being back here, and a lot of them are former you know mm -hmm. players, members of the Oregon, or they're still members of the Oregon yeah. State family. I mean, does that make it? Uh, you know, a little bit more special when you come back just to see all these guys that used to be around when you were younger? Yeah, I mean, it really it, it speaks vol volumes for Coach Riley. I mean, it just shows him he's the kind of guy that, you know, kids want to play for, and then when they start their next career, they, if they want to coach, they want to come back and work with him and learn from him. So, you know, it, it's a special thing because, you know, everyone that's uh, came back that's on this staff now that's a, that was a former player I played with. And I was, a, I was, you know, whether I started with them or played against uh, played against them or, or, you know, they might have been a couple years younger. But it, it, it means a lot to uh, have that camaraderie. And, uh, you know, our biggest thing is, is to not really tell them about what we did, but uh, just kind of um, be mentors to them. The things that we learned that we were successful at, you know, we can help these guys out. And, and things that we weren't successful at, we, we kind of knew why. And uh, so I just want to pass that uh, knowledge on to the next generation. You talked about the, the last couple of games with, with the Titans. I remember we ran a highlight because Chris Johnson broke off a huge touchdown yeah. run and you helped create that hole. Um, first chance to ask you about that play. Can you Do you remember it vividly? Yeah, we, uh, we ran 15 Bob Trade and, and uh, you know, we were actually supposed to check the play. My own line coach gave me a bad time because we ran a quick count and, we, and I didn't check it. And, uh, and we just kind of let it run, but uh, thankfully Chris set it up perfectly, and, and I was, he kind of, you know, I set my guy up and blocked him well, and Chris kind of made one guy miss, and and uh, he's fast enough to take it 94 yards any day. So it was it was special to go down as the, uh, as the single longest touchdown run in, in Titan Oiler franchise history. You know, I'm I was a part of that. <laughs> um, now, uh, stepping away from. Uh you know, a, a joyous occasion to yesterday being sort of just a, a really somber one across the country, but uh, had impact here in Corvallis. And, and for you, can you describe um, what yesterday was like from your perspective, you know, having someone that, you know, means a lot to you in that race? Yeah, I was, uh, it was tough. Uh, my fiance was running in it. And, um, you know, the hardest thing was um, not being there, you know, not being there with her to uh, support her in the run. And then when, when that uh, horrific bomb went off, not to be there as a uh, as her future husband, uh, you know I, I was. It was good enough that that this program, um, you know, cares so much about our families that, you know, uh, Hillary uh, O'Brien had told had called, made a phone call. Someone got a hold of my fiance, and then Ryan Gunderson told me at practice, and and he brought my phone out and and 
you know, kind of hit me by shock. You know, you don't, you, you think of, I mean, that, that race has been running since 1897. And uh, you, know, you think you're at a safe place, but you never know. So, you know, I finally was able, it took me about a half hour to get a hold of my fiance. I, I had to, I called her friends, I called her family. And, and finally, because the phones were so bad, we were able to text. And, you know, that, uh, Ryan had told me she's safe, but it still, it still really hit, hit me off guard. And, and uh, until I heard her voice, I, I was still, I mean, I, I was still empty inside. And, um, you know, once I heard her voice, I, I settled down a little bit and, uh, and we decided, you know, we kind of talked through what we should do, where we should go, how we should do it. And, and the biggest thing was I just wanted her to be safe. And, and uh, I've talked to her all day yesterday, talked to her this morning, and I'm going to call her right now and make sure nothing else funny has happened in Boston. So she'll be home this evening and uh, back with me, which I'm really thankful of. Now, I'm sure in the grand scheme of those events taking place, it might not have been, you know, that long, but it probably felt like forever. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, that... that that half hour before I heard her voice, it was, it was probably the longest half hour of my life. You know, it was the first time that that you know real American tragedy had affected me personally. Uh, you know, we hear about 9/11. I saw it in high school on TV, but you know, as far as having the implications on me personally and my family, it, there wasn't that. So, you know, with my fiance in Boston, it, it, it you know affected me. It made me look at things differently. It made me, you know, really um, look at life. And uh, I really thank the Lord that, that he was there watching her. And, you know, today it, it, I'm still affected by it. You know, it still bothers me. But, you know, just to know she's safe is, is a great feeling. But there's so many families affected by this, by this you know, event that, you know, we, we want to do, I, I want to do the most I can to help this, you know, help, help people recover at it, recover from it emotionally, physically. You know, there's, there's three, I think they had confirmed three dead and over 130 injured. So, you know, there's a lot of people and, and um, all the runners that, I mean, the, all the runners that were affected by it, you know, I just hope that, that this nation can recover and, and we can take the right steps to, to really, um, I guess, uh, uh, revenge what happened. What was her proximity to, like, did she finish? Yeah, she so finished? she finished. So thankfully she's a fast runner and, and finished. And, uh, you know, luckily, I mean, like I said, it was the grace of God. She usually stays after. It's a kind of like a big party afterwards uh, towards the finish line. There's vendors, there's food, there's drinks, there's everything. And her dad and her stepmom were there. So they usually just kind of hang out and watch and, you know, support the runners coming in. But, you know, because it was a cold day, she uh, she had the chills when she got done. So she finished and then about picks about 20 minutes to go from the finish line through, you know, getting your medal and vendors and all that stuff. And then her dad wanted to take the ta uh, subway and she just said, no, I want to get in the taxi, dad. And, and uh, and then about she got in a taxi and five minutes later the bombs went off and and you know i come to find out that her dad and her stepmom were actually where the second bomb went off they that's where they watched the race and that's where they took pictures at so you know it, it's a it's a miracle that they were okay but you know I, i'm just so thankful that we're here today